Good morning, good evening, or good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for attending our webinar this morning or afternoon or evening. Um, before we can get started, I wanted to highlight a few things before. If you have any questions during the session today, please edit to our Q&A section. Having problems with audio, you can either try using our voice over IP option or our dial back feature. The webinar is being recorded and we will be shared in, you know, with you uh, via email afterwards. Just, just give us a couple of hours for us to process the video and share with everyone. After the webinar, if you would like to have a deep dive demo or the other conversation with our sales team, please email to sales.raz at parallels.com. The topic today, it's related to remote working. And me, Victor Fizz, which I'm the director of sales engineers at Parallels, have been talking to companies and other folks in the industry or even in your area or your area of expertise, how we could do remote working and compare with different technologies and different approaches, which is the most secure, most effective, or even most, um, let's say, flexible for the current demand that we have uh, during COVID-19 or, or different situations that you might have. So before we get started into the topic itself, I'll be talking about who is Parallels, how remote working after the lockdown in terms of options that you can explore. You might go back 100% to normal or the new norm will be slightly different or it will be a combination of partially working from home or even from an office. So where the, you know, here's where being dynamic, it is very important to, to know how we can access those applications or desktops regardless where we are and what kind of device we have. An overview of Parallels RAS a few customer success stories, and then we can jump into a Q&A section. And again, if you have interest to go for a demo or a deep dive session, please contact our sales team and then we can go from there. All right, Parallels, it's a global company. We, are, you know, we have presence for customers in more than 140 countries, and we touch more than 5,000 channel partners. Uh, Global Trust, more than 20% of the 20, uh, of the Fortune 500 companies use Parallels technologies. And in the B2C area, we have more than 7 million individuals. And in the B2B, more than 50,000 businesses currently using uh, our technologies. Our solution portfolio, probably the first one you know or have heard before, which is Parallels Desktop for Mac which is pretty much allowing you to run Windows and Linux on Macs at side by side with the Mac operating system. We have also Parallels Toolbox for Windows and Mac, which is, you know, provide powerful tools to simplify everyday tasks like recording videos, like screenshots, or even downloading videos if you need to, to have them before a trip. Parallels Access allowing you to access one-to-one -one relationship with a computer, which can be a PC or a Mac, and Parallels Mac Management uh, for SCCM or Microsoft Endpoint Manager. Uh, this product was designed to manage uh, you know, Macs in companies or in office or remote and have you know, proper security and software distribution packages like would you do in a Windows environment. And of course, the big topic for today, which is Parallels Remote Application Server, allowing you to publish applications, desktops, or even remote PC or remote PC pools for employees working from home or even from their offices. So remote working after the lockdown, this is a very interesting you know, survey that we collected from our customer base and also from, from other sources is 78% responded that flexible schedule and telecommuting is very important for them. And flexible schedule, like it happens to me or it's happening to you right now, we need to blend things happening at home and at the same time, uh, you know, be productive uh, as best as we can. And in this condition is, you know, allowing users to connect to, to those services you know, now probably 24 by seven more than before, 
were more reliable than before, it is very, very critical. So the demand from the user community, business users, to IT or to uh, the infrastructure teams, or even to a service provider, has significantly increased. On the flexibility side, this is a metric here from, from, from US businesses that uh, people are willing to have more flexibility to where they work and where they live. So in a way, it's important to say, look, it's great to have you know, mobility, but how you protect the information. And if you are in different state or you know, regions, how can you make sure um, the proper setup is given to the user? So if you think now shipping you know, hundreds of laptops is the best way to do it, or even provide VPN, it is a huge demand of traffic. So that's you know part of the conversation today. And of course, um, 7 million people reported to be working from home uh, uh, before COVID-19. And of course, that changed pretty much to like 35 to 40 million people now working from home. So the jump and the need for a technology to stream applications become more and more relevant because you know you need to have time to set up the applications in a fewer places than others that's another you know point of the discussion today and 74 percent of business the business leaders expect to be working from home permanently after a talk down and this is coming from gartner right in, in interviewing um enterprise customers or you know smb in general now many companies used to allocate more or less 70 to 80 square foot per person. So are now exposed to, to more space for each employee in the workspace. So here's an interesting point, right? The, the space allocation should be given to the employees who needs to have the access or interaction with others. I'm not saying here after COVID-19, if you don't need an office, just eliminate it. That would be impossible to happen. You need to have some sort of human interaction and at the same time be mobile. So what used to happen a lot of with people traveling around between one office to another, going to customers here and there, that shifts in um, not one by one, but I would say exponentially to say working from home once or twice a week or saving office space or minimizing office space and having more like satellite offices. So that's one point of that, you know, it's seeing. And this creates part of the discussion today. Again, how can you maintain application delivery to, to users at the same time, not having to ship software, consuming all of your bandwidth and concerning about if the connectivity from one place to another, it's secure and open, you know, pretty much all the time. So the scenarios that we have mapped and we have seen, they can be broken down as follows. First of all, employee rotation, which I just described, right? Uh, people working in different shifts or different days of the week coming to office to maintain maybe uh, health, uh, health advisory um, guidelines or even Part of the flexibility, right? So that's that's one of them. Now, the second one, it's about the flexible hours, the time users will be coming in or coming out. An interesting point about the flexibility of working time, it is how you can adapt your infrastructure to be ready when and how users come to work. And part of the answer in, in remote application server, which I mentioned, uh, um, in a few slides from now is auto scaling or even we use a feature to learn based on machine learning capabilities or AI how users come to work and their sessions will be ready and when I mention about come to work is not physically it could be connecting remotely or using their tablet and so on the next one it's related to extended working week which is depending on the market, people might be working different days of the week, maybe six days a week or four days a week. It, it will be depending on the industry needs and how the economy 
will come back in terms of the demand that needs to be delivered, right? So that is part of, uh, you know, thinking about how maintenance uh, windows or upgrades in the back-end infrastructure will affect end users, which means for IT, time for upgrade probably will be shorter than how it used to be. Um, reducing office capacity. Um, recently, in fact, we, we have been asking uh, Parallels employees and our sister companies, what options you want to go after COVID-19? Do you want to stay home 100%? Do you want to come to work, uh, I mean, to a physical office location once or twice a week or partially, or just go back 100%? And the result is interesting because certain people that never thought about working from home wants to work from home now. And a few that says, oh, you know, office, it's okay. But now they realize it's more important to come to work for multiple, you know, personal reasons. And of course, the last one, it's related to what we hear all the time. Testing and hygiene, washing hands and so on. It's a key factor for us to go back to normal lives. And every day we read that, you know, schools being reopening or schools being closed again. We're adapting to a new norm until certain things could be managed and controlled. And that will affect how we do business, how we operate IT, how we deliver applications, how we keep things going the best way as we can and we adapt fast enough without also creating other you know, cost constraints to, to business to just to deliver those applications to users. So research showing significant number of people who have been working from home because of COVID may find themselves currently working from home. And this information or this quote came from Gartner. And it also reflects how we are, you know, talking to customers or surveying our own employee base. Because certain businesses realize that having certain employees working from home could potentially save, uh, you know, investments or office space to other people that could be coming. On the other hand, it's better for them. They don't want to take long commutes, long drives, stuck in public transportation. And sometimes people spend an hour or two each way to work every day. So those potentially are good targets or focus users that could be working from home, you know, permanently based uh, once the COVID might be gone or, you know, managed. So what would be the advantages from a business perspective? One of them, of course, it's related to talent attraction. You can find more employees for your company in different regions. Certain markets are extremely saturated or the cost of living is super high and so on. And one of interesting point about the productivity is certain individuals working from home they can be more engaged. Of course, you have to build your own methodology. I worked from home before uh, having to work in an office again. And the interesting point that I realize is you create your own system. You create the time you, quote unquote, virtually come to work, how you engage with other coworkers to be more active, to be more relevant to others to remember about you and be able to carry on conversations or even run projects together. And the employee satisfaction comes with it because that type of interaction will work better for more people. And of course, you know, the fact that um, retention and the satisfaction comes along, you make them happier to stay longer. And this is part of, you know, the deliverables and adapting to, can I come to work a little bit later or I need to drop off my kid to the doctor or to school and so on. And working from home could be more advantages to that level. Of course, here I'm talking about more about the, the, the side from a, the psychological side for the companies and users and 
of course, there's a technology piece behind that is highly relevant to, to be described. So when we talk about that, of course, we have some tips and tricks, which is about rely on your community, friends, helping to, you know, see what's going on or, or help them. And one of the things that I realized when we talk about the community, part of your coworkers or people that you interact on a daily basis, they become as part of your community. It's part of your extended family, if you will, to some degree, right? And they give you the extra support, connections, and they build this virtual network for you. Of course, relying more on your neighbors or friends, it will compensate the face-to-face -face interaction that even using tools, they might not be the best, but they will be helping us during you know this particular you know tough journey or tough times. The second one, the benefits of working remotely. And this comes an interesting point. A lot of people working from home, they might have their own devices. They might have their own choices. They might have their own um, type of job that requires to be a Mac or a PC or a tablet or a Chromebook. And that's where actually Parallels helps a lot because you can use Parallels desktop for Mac users if they're using a lot of things from, you know, on their computers all the time. But if you want to centralize the applications and stream them to all of your users and just updating in the form of a centralized way, that's where Parallels Remote Application Server comes across very, very well. And then you can create your own workspace, quote unquote, your virtual office. And once you're done working, just leave it. Don't come back. Wait until the next day. That's exactly what's going to happen when I'm done with this particular uh, webinar if I'm presenting to Asia Pack, which will be a little bit late in the evening. But that will be done as soon as I'm done. And this is a very important one. Because you might be missing your face-to-face -face interactions with others, and I like this a lot, over-communicate, use chat, call, touch base, catch up, or just call your coworkers to say hello. And that makes you remembered and relevant in a good way, which means when you're remote and people start coming to, to the office, the over-communication will create this particular presence that will be missing because you're not there. And the last one, it is take time for yourself. You know, one thing that I do a lot, which was part of um, my personal life goals to, to cut down some weight is I have my walks during my lunchtime and during breaks, even if they're a little short. I do the same thing at home. I, I call my dog, we go for a walk and come back. And during lunchtime, have a break, read a book, catch up what's going on, you know, in terms of news, if you if it's something that helps you or just watch a video or a movie during your lunchtime. The reset is important. And or just go downstairs or outside and play with your kids. That's something that I think is important because you create some separations and you relax and you, you try to focus on all, you know, core, uh, the core needs of your life, the personal side, the business side, the family and friends and so on. So how we help you from a technology perspective. So, you know, after all of, you know, this tips and tricks and what's going on in our lives today, one of them is mobility, right? Parallels Remote Application Server, it is a virtualization technology, which you can create your desktops, your applications that needs to be published like an ERP system or a Windows VDI that needs to be delivered to a tablet like a doctor or a medical application and so on. And in the mobility side is people moving around and in, in the conditions today could be just being at home or 
going around from one room to another in the house, trying to find a quiet place if you don't have a real workspace to sit down. And, and the other point on the mobility side is in the healthcare industry, for example, we're seeing more doctors and nurses having to interact so much faster that they need to carry medical records in a much quicker way. So that's where it's a good way to, to use our technology for that matter. The applications, depending on the line of business, it, you know, you are used to use, use for example, you know, Windows device and browser versions are limited or if you have very you know an unstable internet connection you might lose the transaction so that's where using the applications that you are used to it from quote unquote physical work or physical client or even vpn connection can be replaced with something much more reliable which is parallel remote application server and give you also the option of using HTML5. So using a computer that has nothing installed and you can consume via browser, but it's not a browser app. It is your full application running through a browser. And the virtual desktop part is allowing them to access Windows desktops, full desktops, and those can be streamed through a client, which can be installed in any computer or device, like an, you know, an iPad or Android device, phoning is the same thing, or you know, VHTML5. And that will allow to carry on empowering knowledge workers to get their job done but not just done, done efficiently without having to, to retrain them on how to use a different application. We just need to tell them, hey, go to this website, download the client, or just use HTML5, and then you know everything should be okay. Now, in the use case area, and this is where enabling remote working on mobile devices, it's quite important right? Because during this time, maybe they don't have a laptop. They might have a tablet, phone, or Chromebook. So instead of, you know, the retraining I just mentioned, you just, you know, have your computer, open a page, and the applications will be there. And it will follow your security protocols, which is the third column over here. So you have enhanced security, which we can enforce policies allowing users to be able to print or not print, copy and paste using scanners or even save the data locally. And at the same time, they are using through Windows apps, through very inexpensive devices, like a you know a Chromebook, for example. And that level of satisfaction and easy to deploy and train will speed you up to do that. And this is very important because bandwidth is very, very well optimized. That's a very good point. And the next one is you don't have to teach or configure, for example, VPN connections, which use a lot of bandwidth, even if you use a split VPN approach, right? So we're sending encrypted traffic between the device to wherever yeah, the applications are running, maybe in the existing data center, or even running on Azure AWS or the on cloud providers, or both of them very securely matter. Of course, the files will be stored on your data center, not in the local computer. That's another good benefit too optimize the bandwidth and you know enhance the security that I just mentioned. And this is very well described in a demo that we can show you how that works. But what happens if I already have hundreds of workstations already sitting in the office? How this how my employees are accessing? Well, in some cases people are just opening a VPN connection, exposing their you know corporate networks and then opening a 
RDP connection, a remote desktop connection to that Windows desktop. It works, it's fine, but it's not secure enough. If somebody snoops, snips, you know, connects to the machine, grabs the information, and then access somebody else's. The way we do is we turn off the connection to a specific PC. We could, and then you can protect the network around it. So you can set parameters, saying, okay, the remote PCs can be seen over here, but nothing else in the infrastructure could be touched. So that's another way to enhance security and very, very important for you to scale up, which you can just push an agent to those machines and you can provide better support saying, look, somebody connected to the PC, but it's not connected anymore. Is the connection hung? The VPC is up or down? So you can have some, some visibility to, to manage that out. And work remotely with personal devices is good in many ways. However, could create some liabilities or, let's say, issues related to compliance. In this case, there's no data that will be left behind on the device. Everything stays in your infrastructure. The applications and desktops will be streamed to the end users. And in that case, in, uh, of, a, of the machine being stolen or be, you know, in, you know, broken, that data will not be lost. So what are the key benefits from a parallel remote application server perspective? Number one, superior user experience. Use any device anywhere. And when I mean anywhere, you could be using a 4G connection or a 3G connection. Um, and when things go back to normal, you can go to Starbucks and still connect to, to your applications or a coffee shop. We enhance the data security because we will know from where users are connecting and you're only exposing securely, very important say, securely applications and desktops and documents. Third, agility for IT and the business to be ready in scale. More users, spin up more VMs. At night, nobody's using. Shut them down, deprovision them if they're running on Azure Workload or AWS or, or even an existing data center, saving some Cost related, uh, related to how infrastructure works. Easy to deploy, configure, and maintain. You can have a remote application server environment running on Azure, for example, in less than 30 minutes for 20 users. You can extend it, scale it up, use other resources that you have in Azure or AWS or even on your you know, data centers. My pre-sales engineers can help you to set up, configure different use cases, and we provide you a free proof of concept on your environment or on Azure for 30 days. And if you're using other technologies like Citrix and VMware, where the cost is very high and you're trying to cut down the costs, even before COVID-19, but now, which is even more important, we can reduce the TCO by 60% if we replace Citrix, and more or less between 30 to 40% if we if you're interested to replace VMware Horizon, for example. And we can connect your you know existing infrastructure, run side by side, and you know you can we can show our value proposition to you. And how we're seeing in the marketplace, I think that's a very good question. Well, this is a chart that was printed or given away by IDC. If you um, use that particular barcode, we can give you a license expert of this particular um, report showing where Parallels is. We're considered to be one of the major players in the market. Uh, we're just behind Microsoft, Citrix, and VMware, you know, our major competitor here is you know Citrix and VMware so we are well positioned and what is very important to highlight here is simplicity easy to use easy to maintain we don't have to 
you don't have to spend too much money and resources training your technical teams or require certifications to run remote application server. In fact, we provide free basic and advanced certification you, uh, you know, from throughout our online trainings and you can become very proficient very quickly. So the idea, keep it simple and we have a group of engineers and support to help you out in case you need our support. To sum up, like in the briefcase, what you need to carry all the time, we provide bi-directional audio. If you're using Skype, Teams, or Ring Central or other applications. Quick keypad, if you're using iPad, complicated applications, it shows like a touch bar. You can create the strokes that you need to give to users and they tap. They don't have to combine different um, keystrokes to make them work. And also the ability to use native gestures designed for touch applications on non-touch applications like Excel, for example, SAP or Epic Healthcare, McKesson and other tools. And we can give you what we call ultra fast login. We learn the time and the day of the week each user comes to work. We learn those patterns using AI technology. And before they come to work, the sessions will be ready for them. And from a profile management perspective, we use FS Logix, which is free for the most part, or we can use user profile disks, which is also a free technology. Printing scanning, native printing to mobile devices and scanning for Windows and in the near future for Macs. So we do the printing and scanning the redirection. Here we sometimes our customers use third-party tools for printing. In most cases, we don't need to have third-party. And we have single sign-on SAML integration. If you're using Azure AD, Okta, and of course, if you just want to use OTP one-time password using Google Authenticator or other uh, uh, OTP tools, we have also. All of these features, they are included. There's no different versions and options. It's all inclusive in our pricing model. So business on the move, any device, HTML5 is also a good option because you can access the applications, in this case, client-less way. So you don't have to install anything on the computer. So if you're traveling, or using someone's computer, that's a very easy way to consume the applications. Enhancing the data security. So let's go a little bit more deeper here. So MFA and smart card redirection. So this smart card is very used in government accounts and as well healthcare. Encryption protocols, we double encrypt at least. We use TLS 1.2 plus RDP encryption in a tunnel to give it to the end user. And the client uses policies to allow what can be done from the end user side, including copying, multi-monitor, printing, scanning, file transfer, and a few other features. And we improve the security just by having all of the data centralized in your data center. You're backing up, not laying copy if you want to control those uh, parameters. So it's you know very well managed in that sense. In the agility side, I think I mentioned a few of this, but let's highlight. We're hypervisor agnostic, which means we can run literally any hypervisor you have. And in a few, we provide auto scaling capabilities. So Microsoft Hyper-V, Nutanix, Scale Computing, VMware, and Azure, we and Citrix Hypervisor, we provide auto scaling capabilities. And for, the, for other ones, 
you can install your workloads like Ali Cloud, for example, but we don't have that automation yet or, or AWS as well. We're multi-cloud ready. We have customers using RAS on-prem or on cloud or cloud to cloud or all of them combined, right? And you can have the controllers distributed based on your uh, plan in terms of availability or uh, contingency, which means if you lose the internet connectivity from a cloud provider, users can still consume their VDIs if you have on-premise workloads and vice versa, of course. One-stop solution where you can use RDS technology, remote desktop services, which means you can do application publishing and share desktops, and Windows 7 or Windows 10 VDI together. And the beauty of this is the way we price its concurrent users. So if the user is consuming RDS and at the same time a VDI from a RAS licensing perspective, there's no additional cost. So you can provide a high availability solution to your users without um, complexity. Well, there's natural complexity because of being different places, but for users it's simple. They go to your one URL and they can connect to the resources that you publish for them. In the deployment side, what is very important to highlight is client auto configuration. One console for pretty much everything in RAS to manage the, the control pane about templates or permissions, access, and including troubleshooting. And if you have use cases that requires multi-tenancy, which is very common for the service providers, you can have one call, uh, well, one console connecting to multiple tenants and as well a single URL uh, for multiple tenants as well. And this is very cool because you can see customer1.mydomain.com, customer2.mydomain.com, and so on. And for automation and control, we provide PowerShell and REST APIs and auto scaling, like I mentioned before. And it's not based about schedule, it's about users. As users come, we add capacity. As users go, we drain and release resources. We don't disconnect users, well, due to shutdown. We will disconnect users because of session limits that you establish, not because of a VM being powered off because it's underutilized. So we're being very, very sensitive about that type of metric. And on the TCO side, we have no expensive add-ons, one license model. So you download the trial version, is the same as the full version, and it's one price. And we have a second price, in fact, for service providers, which you know matches the same way. Again, for enterprise customers, one price. For SMBs, the same price as enterprise. And for service providers, which is it works a little bit different, but it's the same way, everything included. So when we compare to a common question that is coming across recently, is I have a PN. Should, why should I consider using Parallels RAS? Well, we created this little cheat sheet over here. And what are the advantages that we see on the VDI world versus the limitations on VPN? So our advantages are we provide a centralized management, like I mentioned before. VDI processing is server slash virtual machine base. You can add resources as you need, GPUs and CPUs and memory on demand based on user workload. And you don't have to ship a hardware to your end users. You can access Windows applications literally from any device. So you don't have to think about, oh, is this app my application going to work in a VPN from an iPad, for example? So that's a very important case to point and no need to optimize bandwidth in VDI. As long as you have enough bandwidth, we, we manage it, we control it, we compress it. 
And streaming is way more efficient than uploading and uh, downloading massive files. That is a given already, especially for users working from home where they have very good bandwidth down and um, up is very limited. Like in my house, I have 300 megabits down and 12 up. Uploading files would be a nightmare if I would not be using a VDI solution. And what are the issues or limitations on, on VPN? Well, you cannot access certain applications just because you're in a VPN. That's, that's the nature of the beast. Um, you have to provide good end user hardware, maybe shipping laptops, PCs, and still, from a security point of view, you probably are exposing too much if you're not using split VPN or, um, or other security that you have to look around. You will need more bandwidth if they're handling with files to be transferred. And there's no granular control like we do have in RAS. Like, can you look a file but not download? You can look a file but not upload or control printing or so on. So it's very high, it's a very limited use case for, for what it can provide. So we, we position, we see ourselves in a much better place to give you the best tools for the for remote users or even in the new normality when it comes when people are on the road. So let's move to case studies. This is one that we can see from uh, from a customer in Germany. Thanks to Parallels RAS, we're able to create a thousand simultaneous remote workstations for our employees in less than five days. So COVID-19 response. Uh, Parallels remote application server was easy to deploy. Application from any or any device. This is from one of our customers in Indiana, here in the US. And uh, this next one here is from the UK. We make it simple for our IT admins to support any devices that students and teachers prefer to use and save us hours of setup time. So imagine every school year refreshing thousands of laptops. It's a very massive amount of work. You just set up in your infrastructure, studio comes, go, reset, is pretty much creating IDs on Active Directory or on Azure AD and providing single sign-on for them. The next one here is in Italy. Um, um, perfect alternative to complex and expensive enterprise solutions. In this case, he's referring to Citrix. Easy to set up, very user-friendly. And of course, while keeping our employees safe, right? So that's sending everybody home and having great access to their applications. Uh, this one is from Australia. Um, Parallels Res easily brought these devices into modern age without the cost of complexity. We're not using computing power from those devices, right? So everything is coming from the cloud. And let's move the takeaways. And I think I have seen a few questions during the call today. I already answered uh, some of them during the chat. So let's take a look on, on the takeaways. High performance is very important to end users, intuitive, productive, and we're not expensive. That's very important to, to highlight. We're enabling organizations to control access to the information, reducing the risk of data loss, malicious activity, and unauthorized access because you're tunneling and directing the traffic where you want. And you can run our solution RDSH base or VDI base, on-premise, hybrid, public clouds or multi-cloud, depending on the way that you want. And if you're interested for a demo, please let's um, have a conversation. It would be love, you know, great to have a chance to, to talk to you and have the time to go through your use cases and then we can learn more about your uh, needs and, um, and, of course, scenarios to come with. And depending how the demo goes, let's do a proof of concept. We don't charge you anything for a proof of concept. You can discuss with us the use cases one more time. We test it out, see how it works. And you can use Microsoft Azure, AWS, or try on your infrastructure. 
And that completes our webinar for today. <clears throat> so I will leave here the, the window open for a couple more minutes and address the questions in the chat. If I don't speak with you again, thank you again while I monitor the chat window.